I'm your host Kevin and I'm about to show you how to do right stuff the wrong way. This is Small Engine Masters. Alright, to get us in the ballpark so we can make a mark on top of the flywheel, we are going to match up the trailing edge of the magnet. Approximately, it doesn't have to be perfect right now. The trailing edge of the magnet to the end of the first leg of the coil. Uh, here's our leading edge, trailing edge, first leg of the coil and second leg of the coil. Now that we have the flywheel lined up approximate, uh, I painted the case and the flywheel with white out just to give you a better contrast so you can see it on camera. Make a mark on your flywheel and we are going to use the side on the case for the reference mark lining it back up. With your first reference mark on your flywheel Hook up your timing light and make your second reference mark on your engine block. It's going to be somewhere around this area if you set your first mark correctly using the trailing edge of the magnet on the end of the first leg of the coil. Alright, I would like to mention, I forgot to mention it earlier, I did take the intake and exhaust valves out of here so I could turn it over with the drill. I didn't want the compression to actually burn up my drill or to damage it. Um, now that we have that done, I'm going to install the intake push rod so we can find approximate top dead center. Rotate your engine in the correct direction. Watch for that push rod moving up. That means that intake valve is opening. Once the push rod starts moving down, that means the intake valve is closing and you're now on your compression stroke. I am going to use the other push rod, insert that in the spark plug hole until I hit the piston, and then keep rotating the engine over until the push rod no longer moves up. As you can see, I'm rocking the engine back and forth slightly and the push rod is staying still. That is your approximate top dead center. With the approximate top dead center found by using the old push rod or screwdriver through the uh, spark plug hole method, you're going to rotate your engine backwards just slightly, maybe about a little less than a quarter of a turn, and install your uh, piston stop. Uh, I picked this one up here at the parts store. This is a spark plug thread chaser. Uh, I know I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube of people smashing up old spark plugs and sticking a bolt through the middle of it and using a nut, but uh, this way I kind of get to keep this tool as a two purpose. Go ahead and snug it up just a little bit. And then rotate your engine forward again until the piston comes to a stop on the piston stop. Install your degree wheel now. I went online on Google and found this as a PDF. I took it to uh, the FedEx print shop locally here, had it printed on a piece of uh, sticker paper. And then I stopped by Lowe's on the way home and grabbed a $4 piece of uh, sheet metal and cut it out and put the sticker paper on the sheet metal. It's a lot tougher than the cardboard ones you tend to see for these small engines. If you only want to snug it up right now, we will be setting it a little bit tighter later on. Take your coat hanger that you make a pointer out of. And install that, make it as a pointer.
Now that we installed the degree wheel and the pointer, rotate your engine until the piston comes to a stop against the piston stop. And then set an approximate location past zero. We're going to set this one at uh, 35. So mark 35 on there. Rotate your engine the opposite direction until it comes to a stop against the piston stop one more time. And it looks like that marking is 18. So 35 plus 18 gives us 53. We are going to readjust this holding tension against the piston, against the piston stop. We are going to readjust this until it's about 26.5, which is half of 53. 26.5 past zero. To make sure that we are correct, we're going to rotate the engine back one more time against the piston stop, and it should read 26.5. And we are there. Since we have the equal number on both sides of zero, we know that zero is the exact top dead center. We now know for sure that zero is top dead center. We're going to line up the timing marks that we made before with the timing light. And with those lined up, go back over to the degree wheel, and that will tell us the ignition timing of this engine. Looks, looks like we're right at 25 degrees before top dead center. And that is how you find timing on a small engine. All right, I would like to address what I've seen on some other timing of small engine videos. Uh, on YouTube, I see a lot of people using some fat tip Sharpies, making a mark on their flywheel and making a mark on their case. And I've even seen a, a guy where he had the marks spaced out about half inch apart, uh, calling it one degree per mark. And I want to kind of address that and why that is wrong. Uh, the engine I'm working with today that I did the timing on is a 420cc. Uh, I went ahead and measured the flywheel diameter. The flywheel diameter is 200 millimeters. Uh, take 200, multiply that by pi, that gives you 628 millimeters as a circumference. To get the distance per degree on the circumference of the flywheel, take 628 millimeters divided by 360, that gives you 1.74 millimeters per degree. Um, as you can see here, and that's obviously not 360 marks, but you get the gist of it. On my digital dial caliper I mark that to 1.74 millimeters and as you can see it is quite small so the people using the fat tip sharpies and half inch per or half inch spacing between the marks calling it one degree two degree I just want to explain why that is completely wrong.